One of the most frequent questions we get asked here on EMBN is what e-bike should I buy? Or maybe what type of e-bike should I buy? Well, given that we're shooting during a global bike shortage at the minute, it should be how do I even get hold of any mountain bike? But we're here today at Raceco Cycles to answer a few questions to help you guys buy your first e-mountain bike. Right then, let's kick off with a few things that you definitely don't want to be doing. Firstly, buying a bike that you don't want in the first place. Don't be persuaded by that pushy salesman. Two, buying the wrong size bike. Number three, buying the wrong type of bike for the riding that you actually do. Number four is don't forget the cost of how much it's gonna to be to maintain that bike. And lastly, don't assume that spending more money is gonna buy you a better bike. True in some cases, sometimes not. Now, before we take a look at how you're gonna bag your new e-mountain bike, we need to work out what e-mountain bike is right for you. And first up, let's take a look at pricing. E-bikes range in price from around a thousand pounds up to 15,000 pounds. Now, the big reason for the difference in prices is that e-mountain bikes tend to be a lot more sophisticated than a standard e-bike, which is just used for general commuting. Now the big question you need to ask yourself is whether you need an e-mountain bike or an e-bike. Now the big price differences in e-mountain bikes is gonna come down to the material that the frame is made out of and the components that are on it. And also whether it's full suspension or a hardtail. When it comes to e-mountain bikes, there are two distinctive types. We have the full suspension bike and the hardtail. Now the full suspension bike is great in an off-road situation. It's got suspension at the front and the rear of the bike, meaning it's gonna give you a really smooth ride. It's also gonna give you great grip, comfort, and control in those situations, but it does come a little bit extra price. Then we have the hardtail. Now these are rigid at the back of the bike and have a suspension fork up front. Now these are great for general day-to-day -day riding or light off-road use. And they do come in a little bit cheaper than their full suspension brother. However, they are not quite as capable when it comes to those off-road situations. E-mountain bikes come in a wide range of travel options. You have those short travel bikes that are often around 100 mil travel. Now these are great for cross-country riding and nice smooth trails. Then you have the bigger brothers, the 180 to 200 mil travel bikes. Now these are great for smashing through downhill sections at high speed on technical terrain. But we consider the middle ground of those two bikes, the 150 to 160 bike to be the ultimate all-round e-mountain bikes. And one last thing when it comes to suspension and travel is that those suspension components on a sub thousand pound bike aren't really up for off-road use. When it comes to the motor that powers your e-mountain bike, there are two distinct options here. We have the lower powered motor, like in the Levo SL, and we have the higher powered option in this Levo. With the bikes that we have here, the Levo and the Levo SL, one will offer four times your power and the other twice your power. There will be a weight difference too, since the lower power bikes use less battery and batteries, and these are different in weight. A Levo weighs around 22 kilos, and the SL weighs in at around 18 kilos. So the question you need to ask yourself here is, are you prepared to put in that extra effort to propel that lower powered bike up those climbs? Or do you want the full powered bike that's gonna become better when it comes to those full on technical climbs? We mustn't forget that there are also many hub drive hardtail bikes on the market that are around a thousand pounds, which are great options. And we have ridden these in some amazing places, although they're not quite so proficient in tough conditions as those mid drive motors. So those mid-drive motors come in lots of different shapes and sizes. They're gonna be mounted around that bottom bracket area of your bike, providing that drive. They come in lots of different options too, and lots of different manufacturers out there. This bike has a Bosch motor in it, but we have Shimano, Yamaha, Brose, just to name a few. Now, they all ride fairly similar, but they have a lot of different characteristics, so get along and try and find which one suits you but it's more about the battery, the app, and the software that controls the bike, and that's what we're gonna be chatting about next. Battery capacity ranges in sizes from 320 watt hours up to those 750 watt hour monsters. Now, battery capacity generally means the bigger the battery, the more range you will get in certain situations. Now, most e-bike batteries are internally mounted on the frame, meaning that you can take them out fairly easily on most models, but some require a little bit more work. 
Motors such as Shimano and the Specialized Bike have incredibly detailed apps which accompany the bikes, giving you an immense amount of data and information. You can also customize the tune of the motor within this too. The question here is to ask yourself, how important is customization and data for you? The display on your handlebars is gonna give you a wealth of information from how much battery you've got left on your bike to how far you've ridden and how fast you've been, as well as a host of other information. Now the size of these units can vary massively in terms of how big they're gonna be on your handlebars. You can get big dashboards in front of you or you can get very minimalistic and stealth options too, which actually have no display whatsoever. It's just a small thumb control. The question you need to ask yourself is how much information do you want in front of your face? Many people think that carbon fiber bikes are better than alloy ones, but they simply give different ride characteristics. The bottom line is carbon is not a better product, it's simply a different one that happens to be more expensive. What you are currently riding or what you might have ridden in the past might affect your feelings on sizing. My advice on sizing is to make sure you're getting the advice of a proper expert. You also need to have a serious think about the upkeep of your e-mountain bike when it comes to replacing those components because that can become very expensive. Items such as the drivetrain, the cassette, the chain, the chain ring, tires, brake pads, it's all gonna wear out and you need to factor in those costs. So how are you gonna buy your e-mountain bike then? Well, a few different options. You can, of course, pop into your local bike shop. There's online bike stores or direct sales. And these all differ in the way they're gonna supply that bike. Your bike shop is a wealth of information. You can go in there, sit on a bike, and talk to the staff who are gonna have a wealth of knowledge. Online stores, you're gonna get a lot of different options and quite a lot of different stock and that will get delivered to your door also. And direct sales, where you can choose that bike and it gets delivered to your door in a box. But there is a downside, you can be problems when you run into warranty, and of course you can't try out those bikes for sizes. Lots of things to think about. So there we go, lots of things to think about when it comes to purchasing your first e-mountain bike. Any questions, get involved in the comments box down below. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's video and make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN to make sure you're not missing out on any content. Cheers.